How's it going guys? Bobby here and today I have my DJI Mavic Pro with me because this video is all about how to pass your part 107 unmanned aircraft test. Now I'm sure you're familiar with what this test is but just in case you aren't a brief recap is this is basically the test that you need in order to use your drone or aerial footage for any commercial purposes. So that is any furtherance of a business uh, whether or not you're getting paid is how it's defined. So in this video, I want to go over why I got this and why I think it's important to get. Every free study guide and every free resource that I found, the only things I use in order to pass this test, and then how to set the appointment to actually do the test. This is going to be a two-part series. In the second video, I'm going to go more over the test itself, things to look out for and things to really pay attention to. So this part one video is going to be kicked off with why I got this. Now, we do a lot of wedding films, that is the majority of our work, but we do also do commercial and corporate work and other things that come our way um, over the years. Now, we like to use drones at weddings, and I will say, before anybody jumps on me, we only use drones for weddings that it makes sense. We don't guarantee it. I'm not gonna fly it dangerously or in a place that it doesn't make sense to, but it is a great tool to get some awesome establishing shots if the venue is right. But this allows us to do this legally. This is, of course, something we're being paid for. It is also something that is furthering our business because it's in the videos that we put on our website, in our videos that we advertise with, etc. We also use it occasionally for stuff here on YouTube. Uh, so, it, you know, in our, in our eyes, it's better to be safe than sorry. Now, this test is a step in the right direction. I still think the drone or aerial industry for unmanned stuff is really not where it needs to be as far as certification. Most of what's on this test really has nothing to do with drones. It has a lot to do with safety and understanding airspace, which is certainly important, but very little to do with the drones themselves. So it's kind of this weird limbo area, but it is better than it was before. So while we do like to use it in our wedding films, one of the big things is that this also opens up another avenue of revenue for our business. We can now, you know, do dedicated aerial imaging or videos or stuff like that. And in the short time that I've had this certification, I've already had a few inquiries for projects like this. There aren't as many people around that can do this legally, so it is less saturated of a market. And especially if you get in early, it can be a great tool to you know drum up some more business. So now we get into the study guide. I passed this test with a 95%. There are 60 questions on the test. I got three wrong. And the three that I got wrong, honestly, were things that I had never heard of in the test prep that I had done. The best part is that I only used free things. I did not pay a dime, aside from the $150 to take the test, but I did not pay a dime for any study material. And like I said, I passed with a 95%. So I wanna go over the only three things that I actually used to study that allowed me to get that 95%. I would say all in all, I probably studied for about six hours to maybe eight hours total, somewhere in that range for sure. And I felt very comfortable taking the test. It was a very difficult test in my opinion. I think there were a lot of questions that were a little tricky, um, but if you take your time, it's certainly doable. Uh, and I'll go into that a little more detail in the second video. But those three sources that I use, the first one is the most basic, the one that you would expect, and that's a PDF study guide from the FAA. Now I'm gonna to link to this in the description of the video. This thing is boring, it is long, it can kind of be confusing, but if you read through it, you take the time, it doesn't obviously give you every question that's on the test, but it does go over anything you could expect to see on the test. It's a very comprehensive guide and very helpful in studying. Now the second thing that I used was the best for me in my opinion. I'm a visual learner. I don't like reading PDFs. And like I said, that PDF was pretty dry material. I would love to sit here and say that I could make a study guide for you, that I could go over everything. But first of all, I can't because I just don't know it well enough. Although I did feel very comfortable with the test. And second of all, there are other ones already out there. And one of them that I used is here on YouTube. It is free. It's by a guy named Tony Northrup. Now I believe he does mostly photo tutorials, but he did do a study guide for the part 107 test. It was super in depth, very comprehensive, very visual. I'm a very visual learner, so that was great for me. He was very well-spoken and had some practice questions throughout the test. It was incredibly helpful. I would highly recommend checking that out. I'm gonna to link to that below as well. I might link it in the video here as well. 
Um, so that was about two hours. I think it was just under two hours long. I watched that twice. It went over everything from start to finish, things you could expect on the test. It really helped me understand things like sectional charts, um, which are huge, um, radio signals, different things with weather and understanding, you know, in the test, it's mostly fixed wing aircraft, but understanding all of those things and, and kind of what to expect on the test. Now, the last thing that I use to help me get prepared for this test is by a company called 3DR. And you might be saying, Bobby, 3DR, like, isn't that the company that has the drone that was gonna compete with DJI? Whatever happened to them? And you are correct, it is the same company. I have no idea what happened to them. That drone fizzled out, it never really competed, not really sure, it did not go the route of the GoPro Karma, thankfully, but it just didn't really compete. However, they have an amazing study guide on their website. I'm gonna to link to that as well. So there now are three links down below that you should check out all three free things that I use to prep for the test. This study guide is more, it's actually just practice tests. It's not an actual study guide. So after you've read through the uh, PDF from the FAA, after you've watched Tony's video, maybe once or twice, take these practice tests. I believe it's 120 uh, questions. And like I said, the, uh, the test itself will only have 60 questions. I didn't see very many of the questions here show up on the actual test, but again, there were a lot of very similar ones. I think this was single-handedly one of the best things that I did is you know taking this, these practice questions. I probably did it about twice, so I did all 120 questions about twice. Um, this helped me really prepare for the test. It goes through, it's uh, 10 questions per page, and then at the end of each page, it lets you know which ones you got wrong. You can try them again. So, you know, if you get one wrong, you can see, oh, well, maybe it was actually this, and then you can submit it again and see if you got it right. So having those practice questions was huge. I think that's what really got you comfortable with the test setting, the timing, you could time yourself, you have two hours to take the 60 question test, um, and so on and so forth. So I definitely recommend going through that a couple times. Now the last thing in this video before we go to the second video next week is how to actually schedule the exam. It's kind of weird, you can't just call up the testing facility and schedule it, at least not the ones by me. I had to go through a company called PSI, that's P is in Peter, um, and you can find them online, they're linked to from the FAA website, and you have to tell them when you wanna take the test, and then what your closest facility is, and then they get in contact with the facility for the exam and schedule the test for you. It's kind of like a weird workaround, but it works, I didn't have any problems. Um, like I said, you call them, you can also email them. It costs $150 to take the test, the downside is if you do fail, which you shouldn't now that you have all these resources, you don't get the money back, and I believe you have to wait two weeks until you can take it again. But that's how to schedule the test. It's fairly simple, like I said, just kind of a middleman to work with. So that's our first video on everything about the part 107. The second video, again, is gonna be more about the test itself rather than prep. This was about how to get ready for it and why I think it's important certification to have. I hope this was helpful. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys might have. Leave them below in the comments. And as always, like and subscribe. Stay tuned for next week on the part two video. And of course, check out the links that I've put in the description for all that study material. Follow along as we create more videos to help you build your brand and your business. Thanks.